there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to show you how to draw this sweet little goldfinch with colored pencil. I'm starting off with a color that's about the same shade as the goldfinch. This is like a lemon yellow. Now I realize it might be a little difficult to see on this toned paper. This is toned watercolor paper. It's a new product by Hanamule, and I was just kind of giving it a try with these pencils, and I do like how it behaved. So I started off with a basic shape for the body and the head. Now you can, um, bring your computer full screen if you're watching this on YouTube and see this a little bit closer. I tried to go fairly light with this first sketch because I might not get a line just right and I might need to um, need to rub it out or um, alter it a little bit. So by keeping your initial sketch light, it's gonna help you. And I like to sketch right with my colored pencil because sometimes graphite will get trapped under lighter colors and you can't get rid of it. So say I drew the outline with graphite and then I went to color, color over it with uh, my yellow colored pencils, it would get sealed into the paper and I wouldn't be able to remove that. So that's why I like to sketch for that same color that my object is. I went in with some black details for the head and the eye, and then I decided to go in with my white pencil and preserve some of the lighter areas. Now I'm using the Cezanne pencils from Creative Mark, and I do find they behave very much like a polychromos there. They feel more oily, although they say they're wax. Um, most pencils are a blend of wax, oil, and clay. And um, because of that, they're more translucent rather than opaque, such as a Prismacolor. So when I know I'm gonna need a light tone, like a white, I try to go in and put that in first. I also like to get my blacks in early because I feel like uh, establishing those values right off the bat really help me when I go to color in the rest of the object. Uh, in this case, the if I get that black and white in, I've got my lightest and darkest values, and it just makes it a lot easier for me to judge my other tones and shadows as I go along. Now, as I'm putting the colors in, I'm going in with the direction of the feathers. So um, instead of like doing circles or coloring back and forth horizontally, I'm trying to put these strokes in with the direction the petals would lay. That way um, it'll kind of have that sleek feeling. I'm not using a lot of pressure here. I am just putting in some very, very light pressure so that I'm sure to be able to get plenty of layers of color down. And um, that way I won't trap like the, uh, how much the, the paper can take. Like when I'm doing white or black and I know I'm gonna need it to stay really dark or light, I will burnish it to the paper a bit and make a slick spot that will be difficult for other pencils to stick on. But when I'm doing, um, you know, a complex area that's gonna have to have a few colors, I'll color very lightly so um, I can keep adding to it and tweaking it and, you know, filling the design that way. Now I can go a little bit faster because I know I have a big area that's just going to be yellow. I'm not using a ton of pressure, but I'm um, just trying to fill everything in. And I find that working on a toned paper is fairly forgiving here because you do have that middle ground in the background. So even if um, my coloring was a little grainy, you wouldn't notice it as much as if I was working on white paper. I really enjoy using a colored or toned background for pencils. Now I'm using a little bit more pressure, but still not a ton because I want to put in some more saturated color. Now I tipped the paper there so that you could see how vibrant the color is because sometimes the glare from, um, from my lights will reflect off of that and make it look really pale. Uh, and that's something you may be concerned with while you're coloring at home. You might want to just have um, maybe a little stack of books or something you can put under your sketchbook so that you can raise your paper at an angle to avoid overhead light glare. It'll really ease fatigue on your eye and help you judge your values a little bit better. Now when I layer over the white and the black that I colored in really lightly with my yellow pencil, I start to get some really nice shading. Now if you've observed birds in real life, you'll notice that you'll they have different toned feathers. They'll have some black feathers and some yellow feathers and some brown feathers and some white feathers and they kind of almost hatch over themselves as if you are cross hatching when you're drawing. So getting those colors in really makes um, an animal look much more lifelike and goldfinches are some of my favorite birds. They come to our feeders every year and they're so pretty and so cheerful to see because they just you just can't miss that bright yellow feathers that they have, those nice bright yellow feathers. Now as you start to fill in the tooth and you want to blend a little bit, then you can grab the pencil closer to the tip and use a little more pressure. You don't want to do that too early on in the game or you're going to fill up the tooth of the paper and limit how much you can layer on top. 
Another thing that I do sometimes is I'll do my background or I'll do the first layer in marker or watercolor or watercolor pencil and uh, dissolve it. And then I'll have a uh, already colored in layer to just tweak with my colored pencils. If you have expensive pencils that can conserve your pencils and it also speeds up the process quite a bit because traditional color pencil work can take quite a bit of time. I'm adding a little blush of yellow into the beaks as well. I originally had put some white on there. And now I'm adding some peach because the beaks have this kind of uh, very pale orange uh, undertone to them. When you're looking at your reference photos, you really want to pay attention to all the nuances that you can see. If you've got your reference photo up on your computer, you can zoom in and get a really great look at some of the details. There are so many free reference photo sites out there and stock photo sites that you'll never want for images. Um, if you know you want to paint a certain thing, you can find five or six versions of that and then you can combine them to create something that works for what you have in your mind's eye. Take your time as you are approaching the edges. I recommend sharpening your pencil frequently as you're getting to these finer areas. That way you won't have um, any mishaps like a line going over the edge like I had here. Now when you do have to lift off some color, try pressing it with a kneaded eraser. If that doesn't do the trick, you can use an electric eraser. This electric eraser was very affordable. I think I paid uh, five dollars at Jerry's Artorama for it and it was very easy uh, it was very easy to take off the end of that beak where I made it a little bit too long and had gotten the edges a little too fuzzy. So that's one of my favorite tools for color pencil work especially with these Cezanne pencils because they respond so well to the um, uh, to the electric eraser. And I'm still on the first eraser in there and I've had it for a couple of years and it, they come with like a pack of 20 refills I think so it definitely um, you're definitely definitely going to be set for quite a while I think I've maybe changed the batteries in it one time now I'm adding some of that same peach color that I used on the beak here and there on the feathers. I try to reuse area uh, colors as much as possible for harmony. And then to scratch out some highlights, I'm using, using an X-Acto knife. Now since my paper is not white, it's not going to scratch it right to the white of the paper, but you can scratch off the wax so that you can lay down white pencil or another color if you accidentally clog the tooth with a color that you didn't want or with too much color so you weren't able to adjust it further. That X-Acto knife will be your friend. You could also use, um, uh, you could probably use um, like a credit card that's been cut to an angle. Like if you're working with kids and you're afraid to let them use the X-Acto knife, that would scrape off quite a bit too. So now I am working on a branch because I want my bird to have a nice sturdy place to, to settle. And I'm using, I'm starting with my white and my black just to get my highlights and my shadows. And black is actually very useful in colored pencil. I personally rarely use black in any other media, but I find in colored pencil it is, uh, it really does kind of carve in and give you a nice richness that you otherwise may not be able to achieve. So don't be afraid to use that. But I do recommend that you add it to other colors so that you don't just have a black hole in your picture, adding it to browns, adding it to purples, adding it to blues. You can get some really nice, rich, deep colors that way without it looking artificial. Um, the most important thing when you're doing a drawing is to make sure your lights and darks are accurate. If your values are right, you could paint this in you know, purples and oranges and it would look fine. You can be colorblind and be a wonderful artist if, you know, because you'll learn your values. That's what you want to really pay attention to. And I really had a lot of fun layering these different shades of brown. This color pencil set that I'm using is uh, the 120 set of Cezanne pencils. I think I probably used about 24 colors here. And um, the nice thing about it is it's a pretty affordable set. It's, I think, uh, around $60 for 120 pencils. So it's about 50 cents a pencil. Um, and, you know, there are a few colors that are quite similar, but that's not really, I don't think that's a big problem because these pencils are not available open stock. So if you use up one red and you've got another similar red that you can use in its place, I think that's fine, especially if you are a beginner artist. Now, I did, I do a review of these pencils on my uh, blog and on my YouTube channel. If you're curious, you can check that out. Um, I think I would recommend these mostly to somebody that likes to work in coloring books or um, somebody who does card making or sketchbook work. I wouldn't recommend these for like commissioned work that you would sell just because I don't know how light fast, how, how light fast they are. It says they're light fast on the box, but I don't 
quite trust it unless I see some ratings or I've done a test myself. Now I want to put a background in here, so I started off by really lightly coloring in with a nice forest green color. And then I went back in and did another couple layers really close to the body. What I'm going for here is a bit of a vignette, uh, darker, closer to the body, and let it kind of feather out into nothing, because, hey, I'm lazy and I don't want to color that entire background sheet. Plus I think it's really pretty when you have that kind of vignette look. Now you can work with a dull pencil for this, that's fine. You don't uh, want to like scratch and scribe into the paper, but if you're getting close to the bird, you might want to sharpen up that pencil. Just use very light pressure so that you can get in there and not leave a halo around the bird. And just proceed like this until you have as much background as you want. This is definitely up to personal taste and um, it's completely up to you how much you want to add in. You can see where I'm holding close to the end of the pencil. That is giving me very little pressure. So if you have issues such as arthritis or just um, like hand or arm weakness, this will make it possible for you to work with colored pencils. And the tip I'm gonna show you in a minute will really help if you are struggling with blending your pencils, with the strength to blend your pencils and um, getting that smooth look. So the first tip is to keep layering. By layering, you're going to be putting a lot of product down onto the paper. And the more product you have down on the paper, the more you're going to fill in that grain and the more you're going to get a blended appearance. And you can also subtly affect how much pigment you have down there. So instead of going in really dark, like say you wanted to start shading, you add a lot of color right next to the, like say the beak. And then you realize, oh wow, that was a lot of work. I wish I didn't put that much color in. If you don't do it to the rest of it, it's going to look weird. But if you work in layers, then you can take breaks. You could also decide, well, I think that's dark enough, or just decide that you're done with the project and it's still going to look fine. It's going to look like it's all up to the same level of completion. Um, and But also by doing layers, you never have to put on that super duper strong pressure to get the color. I'm giving a little more pressure here than I did on the other layers, but I'm not doing that for the entire background. So it's not going to fatigue your hands or arms like burnishing wood. And that's when you're really coloring firmly with a colored pencil. So doing things like that in your process is really going to help you if you have hand fatigue from colored pencil. Now, the other thing I want to share is using solvents. Now you can use different solvents to blend your colored pencil. One that I like to use is called Gamzol and I actually took an old marker and put fresh nibs in and um, I filled it with Gamzol and I love to use this for blending out my markers. So you can also use a paintbrush but if you maybe want to travel with it you don't want to bother with carrying a bottle of solvent and a paintbrush having it in a marker form works really well. You can even buy empty markers. I know Copic sells them. There's a more affordable option called uh, by Ranger um, I think it might be called like an alcohol marker, but it's empty. It doesn't have anything in it and you can just put your whatever solvent, whether it be alcohol or whether it be Gamzol, older loose mineral spirits, um, or whatever you like to use. Gamzol's nice. It has no odor and it works really well for dissolving your pencil. There's another product for folks that live in Europe called Zestit Pencil Blend. I've never seen it over here, but it's supposed to be pretty natural and um, I don't know if it's non-toxic, but it's supposed to be pretty low in toxicity and it probably smells like oranges because it's made from orange peels, I guess, but that's another product that you might like. Now with the marker technique here, you do need to scribble off the marker between colors, otherwise the nib gets, gets saturated with that color and it would, um, it would contaminate whatever you colored next. So just make sure that after you're done coloring, if you do use a marker like I'm doing, that you scribble it off onto a scrap of paper. Now you can buy this little blending kit from Prismacolor that has a colorless blender marker and some, um, some like blending pencils in it if you like. Uh, I don't find that the colorless alcohol marker blends the colored pencil quite as well as odorless mineral spirits, but that's up to you. That's basically the same clear blender you would use for alcohol markers. So if you have one already and you want to try it, it won't do any harm. Just make sure you scribble it off onto a scrap of paper before you use it on any alcohol marker projects. And I'd probably honestly just dedicate it to color pencil if you're going to do that. But, um, but it works just fine. And here I'm putting a little more Gamzol into my marker because it's starting to get a little dry. But I just pull the nib out and I put it in the Gamzol. That's how you would fill any empty marker with the Gamzol. And it works really well. You can see how dirty the nib is there. I definitely need to scribble that off. But you can get replacement nibs if you do end up messing it up. Um, I think I use Copic re replacement nibs because um, they were available and the marker body that I have was just an old Studio 71 cheapy that had uh, dried out. And it was a really light color so I could clean out the interior felt and just use it for Gamzol. 
And then I decided to go in to darken up the blacks. I use the solvent. It will make the colors seem darker and more vibrant because it breaks down the wax and the oils in the pencil and removes them. So you don't have that haze anymore on top of your work. Um, so it does give you a solid color by filling in the grain. It removes some wax, so it gives you more a more intense color. And it just gives it more of a painterly look versus a pencil-y look. So um, definitely something to try. And of course, use uh, you could also use a Q-tip. You could also dip a Q-tip into odorless mineral spirits and do the same thing. I've also used Goo Gone for this. That works just fine. Um, it's basically any sort of solvent that would break down like crayon or wax. And Goo Gone takes um, or goof off any of those. They take crayon off walls, so uh, so they work fine for this. It does smell pretty pretty strong though, so that would be my only uh, consideration. I don't think I don't know if it's non toxic or what, but it smells pretty pretty toxic. Um, I wouldn't call the Gamzol non toxic. I'm not sure if they do or not, but it's a solvent. Anytime I'm working with a uh, solvent, I make sure that I have ventilation and I'm just I'm just aware that I've got that chemical open. So. You know, you can do whatever you like. You could also use watercolor pencils and dissolve, you know, everything with water and then just do some touch-ups with um, with wax pencil. I do find that a wax or oil pencil does have a certain luster that a watercolor pencil doesn't. So it's really nice to mix those two together, especially if you don't want to deal with solvent. Um, but if you don't want to have two sets of pencils, you don't want that expense, you don't want that storage issue, Hey, you can do it with your regular wax or colored pencils. And these techniques are going to work with whatever colored pencils you have at home, so don't feel like you have to run out and buy these if you have a set of pencils already. I know it's fun to collect colored pencils. I have a bit of a colored pencil problem. I was just looking at my shelf of color, shelves of tins of colored pencils thinking, have I lost my mind? So I totally get that. Now, after you've added your solvent and your paper's dry, you can actually go in and add more pencil on top. Now, like I mentioned before, the white pencils in the set are not my favorite. I really like the white Prismacolor pencils, and I think no matter what brand of pencils you use, having, you know, go ahead and grab that Prismacolor white. I've also heard good things about the Derwent white. Uh, I don't know if it's their signature or drawing line. I don't have it, but... Um, well, I do have their white drawing pencil, and it is, it's quite nice. It's thicker than this Prisma, than the Prismacolor one, but I definitely recommend picking up, you know, the Prismacolor white pencil. It's under two bucks, usually around a dollar or something, and um, it's just so opaque and creamy and wonderful. The only thing is it tends to break, and that's just a pain with some Prismacolor pencils, especially the white, because it's the softest. And I think that's why a lot of companies don't have a really good soft white, is because of the problems with having it not break. Um, but it's definitely worth that little bit of aggravation to have that nice pure white to be able to add on top of things. So um, that would be my recommendation. If you're not happy with your colored pencils before going out and buying a new set, go to any art and craft store and pick up a single Prismacolor white and a single Prismacolor black. And I think adding those to your repertoire of pencils is really going to, um, it's really gonna make an impact and make your other pencils a lot more useful. So before you go buy a new set, try that because that might just do the trick. I'm also using some black to add some uh, thin shadows next to the bird's claws um, because it just needs that to pop against the branch. And I tend to do a lot of these little these little tweaks at the end because if you put in these details early on, chances are you're just going to obliterate them as you go through the layering and coloring process. So no point in doing that work twice. Do it at the end when it you know and do it once, and then you're going to get a crisper line too because you'll go in there with that sharp pencil. You'll put it on there with confidence because you've been working on this. You know the form, you know your subject really well by the end, and you're just going to be a lot more accurate. And at this point, I'm kind of burnishing or coloring fairly firmly to blend with my white pencil. Um, not a ton of sticking at this point. My tooth has been pretty well fulled, and these pencils are pretty oily feeling, so um, my pencil's feeling like it just wants to glide around the top. Uh, and when you get that point, you're just kind of like, okay, that's as light as it's going to get with this pencil. I don't think I used any Prismacolor on this one. I'm trying to recall back. I actually did this artwork a couple weeks ago, and I'm just now getting around to voicing it over. Um, but I do, I did want to try to do as much with that line of pencils because I was getting ready to do the review of this piece at that point. And I really just love highlighting. I think it's my favorite, um, my favorite technique with, with actually with anything. When you're going in and you're putting on those bright highlights and those sharp details and shadows, it's fun because then you get to see all that work pay off and you get to see everything kind of come into focus. Um, and I did run into a little bit of an of a issue with these final layers sticking. Even though this is cold press watercolor paper, which has a decent texture to it, I find that it didn't want to grab as much pencil as other papers. And I think it's because it's a 
watercolor paper. It's got an external sizing on it, which is almost like a sealer or a glue that uh, paper manufacturers put on top of a paper so that the your wet media doesn't feather on you. You don't get those like, you know, blurry edges, but that can also affect how much dry media you can put on. Even though it's got a physical texture to it, since the, the paper itself is sealed, it's not gonna grip as much pencil as say like a drawing paper that has not been that hasn't been sealed on the outside it hasn't been sized so all those little paper fibers are nice and grippy and gritty and want to grab that dry media but if you went and put wet media on it then it would want a feather i hope that makes sense so that's why you have so many papers in your repertoire some are good for this some are good for that um but i do like i i, I did enjoy this paper for color pencil i've used a few brands on it and uh and i like it they also have a gray version and I wish the gray version was a little bit darker. The gray version in, uh, I would say in value was a little bit lighter than this beige. And I just don't feel like it, it's different enough from white to really give you a good contrast if you go in with any white highlights or anything. So, and it's, but it's just gray enough to make your watercolor seem a little dull. I'll do a full review on those papers once I've played with them a little bit more. I feel like I'm kind of missing something. And I'm sure once, you know, I'll find something that's perfect for it and then I'll be like, ah, oh, this is wonderful for this. But right now I love the beige, but the gray is just kind of bumming me out. Um, yeah, so I just put a few more layers on the bird itself. You can see it's starting to get a little glare to it. Uh, but when I hold it at an angle, you can see how nice and vibrant those colors are. I hope you enjoyed this. This was so fun to bring this tutorial to you. I hope these tips helped you in your color pencil journey. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.